I'm going to do a brief session understanding dot gain. And this is one of the issues that you're going to face as a screen printer relating to working with half tones. You'll need to be aware of dot gain. That's one of the reasons that you'll want to do the test print, as we suggested in our basic half tone tutorial relating to half tones. And if you haven't watched that, it would probably be a good idea to do so. If you're just getting started with half tones, give you some insight and how to work with half tones and what you'll be dealing with. And another issue that you'll be dealing with half tones is dot gain. Dot gain is a circumstance whereby when you start out with a certain size of dot, after you burn your screens and then take pressure and pull a squeegee across your screen, push that ink through, your dots are going to expand. Also, the substrate that you're working with or the material that you're printing your half tones on will also affect that. And other things such as your film, your emulsion, your exposure unit all come into play when you're dealing with dots and dots dot gain. Now here on the left hand side here I have a simulated dot gain I created so we can take a look at this. Now this may be exaggerated but it will help us to understand what dot gain is so you'll be able to prepare for that in your shop and you'll be able to see why we set up simple steps the way we did. Simple steps is more than just automated color separations. We designed it and developed it with dealing with half tones, dot gain and what screen printers work with in mind. We'll get into that in just a minute but the first thing I want to look at is dot gain. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll select both of these objects, hold down my shift key, and then I'll hit C and E to center them. I'll take this top monochrome bitmap and I'm just going to right click and fill that with a yellow ink. Left click to knock out the background color and I'll go ahead and zoom in here. And we'll go ahead and take a nice close look at these dots. And you notice as we zoom in, on the top here I've got the dots I started with, but the black behind that is a simulation of what's going to happen when you push ink through a screen with force onto a garment. You're going to have dot gain. And that dot gain is going to have more effect in your mid-tones than in some of your highers and lighters. And it's really going to depend on what's going on with your equipment and in your shop as to how much dot gain you're going to have. And that's why you want to do that test print we talked about in the video on half tones. And you'll notice looking here, I'll take this, move this one back over here, I'll right click to fill that back with right, but you'll notice how our tonal values changed as we go down through here with dot gain. Now, up here in the 90s, probably going to fill in. And as I said, down here in 10%, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to hold that dot. But here in the middle, you'll get some changes of tone. And after you've done some test prints and different work with half tones in your shop, you'll understand what's going on with your colors and your densities. And then, you will be able to work with the tools we have in Simple Steps to manage what's going on with your half tones. One of the things we've done is we do everything with tinted palettes based on increments. The default is set from a 15% density, or it would be a 15% color, to 85 because we know that when we do our color conversions, we don't want to be down here in the 10s and up there in the 90s. Now, of course, you can change this based on your preferences. But when I go ahead and create a tinted palette, these are the ranges I'm going to be working with. So we want to use simple steps, not just to do generate our separations, but literally we're managing what's going on with our halftone and what's going on with our dot gain because we're going to get control over the densities of the color that we're working with when we're converting to colors and when we're designing. Very often, if I'm starting a project, what I'll actually do is the first thing is I'll go ahead and create a couple of color chips. Let's say I'm working on a design and I've got a Pantone black. I'll right click and knock that out. Knock that out. Duplicate this and let's say we're going to be working with some red and we'll be working with some yellow. Usually one of the first things I'll do is I'll take these colors, I'll create palette from these, select all of them and I'll come down here and I'll give myself an increment of one so I get the full spectrum of these colors and then I'll create create tinted palette from selected palette colors and you can see now I've got a full palette of the colors I can be working with in this three color design and I can see the full spectrum of the tones that are available to me when I'm working but yet none of these tones are going to be below 15 or above 85 so that I'm not going to get into where I'm going to lose a tone because it's just going to fill in or I'm not going to be able to print it because the dots going to be too small so that's how dot gain works and this is how we address it through simple steps. Now there's a lot of other features and functions that are in this application that will help us manage our half tones, but we want to be aware of dot gain and we also want to be aware of the specific tools that we have in simple steps to help us manage our colors so that when we go to cre create separations and we print our half tones, we're going to be able to hold the tones that we have effectively and address as much of the issues as we can relating to dot gain in our shop 
and then printing our separate color separations and getting things so that our tones look like the comps and mock-ups that we're sending to our clients based on the use of our colors within our spectrum. So we'll go ahead and wrap here. That's our session on dot gain. And of course, as we got into here, Simple Steps is uniquely suited to help you address those issues and work with those issues and eliminate errors in your halftones based on the densities that you're using in your tinted palettes. Also, these tinted palettes work in all of our color conversion. So when we do a one-click conversion, we're staying within this range. And once you've done your test print, you'll be able to dial that in for your shop and set up these increments so they work exclusively for the type of work you do and the way in which your shop handles halftones and um, densities of ink or grayscales of halftones. So we'll go ahead and wrap here, and we'll continue in the next session.